In this video, we are going to give a brief overview of inner products. If V is a vector space, then the inner product is defined to be a map from V times V to R satisfying the following properties. First is that the inner product is commutative, meaning if I take the inner product of U and V, that's the same as the inner product of V and U. So notice that we denote the inner product of two vectors by putting them within angle brackets. So next we have a distributive property. If I have the inner product of u plus v with w, then the w distributes to give us the inner product of u and w plus the inner product of v and w. The third property says that if I have a scalar c times the vector u, and I take the inner product of that with v, then the scalar c can be pulled out of the inner product. So I get c times the inner product of u and v. Now, if c is multiplied to an inner product of two vectors, I can bring that c within the inner product and bring it inside the first term like we have here, or I can bring it into the second term like this, the inner product of u and c times v. Our last property is this. The inner product of u with itself is always greater than or equal to zero. And the inner product of u with itself is equal to zero if and only if the vector u is the zero vector. So it turns out that you've worked with inner products before. When working with the vector space v equals rn, the dot product is an example of an inner product. As a reminder, we define the dot product as follows. If u is the vector u1 through un, and v is the vector v1 through vn, then u dot v is the transpose of u times v. I know we usually don't define the inner product in this way, but let's try to see that it's the same as what we're used to. So when we have u transpose, it turns the column vector u into a row vector u1 through un, and I want to multiply this with the column vector v1 through vn. So right now I can think about this as a matrix multiplication. I have a 1 by n matrix multiplied to an n by 1 matrix. Doing this matrix multiplication, we get u1 times v1 plus u2 times v2, and so forth, summed up through un times vn. And that's probably the dot product definition that you're most familiar with. The product of the corresponding entries in u and v summed up together. And you can check that it does satisfy all of the properties of an inner product. For example, the dot product is commutative, the dot product distributes over vector addition, and you can pull scalars out of dot products. Lastly, a dot product of a vector with itself is greater than or equal to zero, and the dot product of a vector with itself is equal to zero, if and only if you're working with the zero vector. So the inner product is just a generalization of the dot product. Moving forward, we're just going to be working with the dot product, so instead of using the notation where I have the angle brackets, I'm just going to use the dot product notation. Now let's look at some examples. In this example, we have three vectors. u is the vector 1, 2, 3, v is the vector 4, 5, 6, and w is the vector negative 1, 2, negative 1. So let's calculate some dot products. For example, u dot v is u transpose v, meaning I want to take the multiplication of the row vector 1, 2, 3 with the column vector 4, 5, 6. So this product would be 1 times 4 plus 2 times 5 plus 3 times 6, which is 4 plus 10 plus 18, which gives me 32. Next, let's do the dot product of u with w. That's u transpose times the vector w, which is the row vector 1, 2, 3, times the column vector negative 1, 2, negative 1, which gives me 1 times negative 1 plus 2 times 2 plus 3 times negative 1. So that's negative 1 plus 4 minus 3, which gives me 0. Lastly, let's do v dot w. So in the future, I'm going to stop using the v transpose w notation. I'm just going to multiply the corresponding entries and add them all up. So here I have 4 times negative 1 plus 5 times 2 plus 6 times negative 1, which gives me negative 4 plus 10 minus 6, 
which is again zero. Next we have the following definition. The norm or length or magnitude of a vector u is the square root of u dot u, or the square root of the components u1 squared plus u2 squared plus and so forth, summed up through the last component un squared. To denote the norm, um, sometimes you write the vector u with two bars around it, but for me I'll usually stick with this notation where I have the u with one bar around it. So let's do a quick example of norm. Um, using the vector u from our example above, let's calculate the norm of u. That's going to be the square root of u dot u, or the square root of the sum of the components squared. So that's the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared, or square root of 1 plus 4 plus 9, which is square root of 14. One property of dot products that you've encountered before is as follows. The dot product of u and v is equal to the norm of u times the norm of v times cosine of the angle in between. Now this property can be proved by looking at the law of cosines and triangles, but I won't go through the details here. An important consequence of this property is that the dot product of u and v is equal to zero if and only if u and v are orthogonal. Orthogonal here just means perpendicular. This is true if we look at this equation, u dot v is equal to norm of u times norm of v times cosine of the angle in between. Now if we assume that neither u or v is the zero vector, then the norm of u and the norm of v are both greater than zero. So the only way the left hand side here could equal zero is if the cosine term is equal to zero. And the cosine term is equal to zero if and only if theta is 90 degrees. Let's look at the vectors that we've been using as our examples. Here we calculated the dot product between u, v, and w already. We saw that the dot product of u and v is 32, which is not zero. So u and v are not orthogonal. On the other hand, the dot product of u and w is equal to zero, and the dot product of v and w is equal to zero. So u and w are orthogonal and also v and w are orthogonal. So we have one last definition for this video. So let w be a subspace of Rn. Then the orthogonal complement of w, denoted w perp, is the collection of all vectors that are orthogonal to each vector in w. So that's it for this video. In our next video, we'll talk more about orthogonality.